guys, this is Maudie, pronounced Maudie, in case you're wondering, with Catitude Daily. I started Catitude Daily because I felt like there wasn't any website out there that appealed to purebred cat owners as well as shelter cat owners. And really, at the end of the day, I mean, we all just love our cats. So really, does, does it really even matter? And a lot of times, you can find some of the prettiest cats of all at shelters and purebreds at that. With that being said, I wanted to start Catitude Daily because I felt as if more people could understand cats better than less cats would be returned to shelters or surrendered to shelters. And that's all anybody really wants is a cat to always have their forever home. And now Catitude Daily is a few years old. We wanted to try something new. So we figured why not jump on the podcast game? And that way we could do something innovative with cat owners to, to real cat people. I figured I could reach out to some of the people that I've had the privilege of writing about before, talk to them more about their cats, get to know their cat's story better, and then the fun things about what makes their life special with their cat. In addition to talking to other cat owners about their cats and what makes their life special with their cats, I figured, why don't we talk about cat behavior itself or interesting things that cats do? You know, why does my cat follow me to the bathroom? Why does my cat sleep at the foot of the bed? Why does my cat stare at me? There's so many quandaries that we wonder about as cat owners, and I figured why not give some insights to the feline mind to help you better understand your cats. This week on the first ever episode of the Catitude Daily Podcast, we have Chelsea, cat mom to the Kevin Bacon cat. You can find him on Instagram at the Kevin Bacon cat. No relation to Kevin Bacon in real life. (laughs) Today, we're talking with her about a little bit about her cat's interesting backstory, how he came into her life about his sibling, Dexteroni, and some other fun things about their lives together that makes everything so special. I'll just let you know that this is my first podcast for Catitude Daily, so thank you so much for being my first guest, and hopefully this goes smoothly. I think it'll go great. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me and I'd love to just get to know more about Kevin B cat or Kevin Bacon, the cat. (laughs) So yeah, uh, he was one of my favorite ones to write about. I mean, I'm sure you're a fan of Kevin Bacon, the actor. So (laughs) naturally I'm a fan of Kevin Bacon, the cat too. So yeah, I just wanted to, you know, kind of connect with you, learn more about him. So that way the cat of two daily readers could learn more about him. Would love to see him if he's around too. (laughs) So yeah, I guess the first question I have for you, you know, if you just want to tell me more about how you met him, I preface the article, you know, in- enticingly to say to the readers, you know, on a stormy night, uh, Kevin Bacon, the cat, and I know there's also Dexteroni too, it's another cat that you have of his that was found. So tell me a little bit more about that night that you met him. Yeah. So, um, I want to say it was in, yeah, it was in December. So it was cold. Um, my now husband and I were, um, driving from Michigan back to Texas, um, cause I lived in Michigan for a little bit and we stopped at this just kind of random motel in Jackson, Tennessee. And, um, yeah, so we got there and it was super late. We got our keys and, um, you know, my husband was unlocking the door And it's one of those with two floors and it's open to the outside. And so I hear this little noise and I look up and there's this little gray kitten um, on the second floor, just like poking his head through the bars and just meowing at me. (laughs) And I was like, oh, that's cute. And he wouldn't stop. It's like, okay, well, I feel like I need to go up and say hi. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I went up the stairs and saw him and was petting him. He was very sweet. Um, and he just kind of followed me down the stairs. And Dexteroni was with him as well? No, Dexteroni came, uh, two years ago. So oh, okay. Like, I thought they were together. My, I'm sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> so when you found him, what kind of condition was he in? Was he healthy? He was, you know, um, he was wet. He was a little skinny. Um, He looked, he wasn't, um, you know, like skin and bones or anything, but it looked like he hadn't been eating very well. Um, And he was cold. And so we ended up taking him into our motel room for the night. Well, it seems like uh, he stayed with you guys forever after that. (laughs) 
how was that drive back with a you know new kitten in tow from Tennessee to Texas? <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually super easy. Um, he was still, you know, really young. He was little. Um, so he took turns, um, laying in our laps, my husband and I, as we took turns driving and he just pretty much slept the whole way there. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) You guys got really lucky then. (laughs) We did. Yes. I think he was a tired boy. Now I know as far as you know, from writing about it, how he got his name, but I'd love you to share some more details about his really adorable name. (laughs) Sure. Um, So originally that night, um, we named him Kevin. Um, I am a lover of awkward human names for animals. Um, (laughs) His older sister that I already had at the time, her name was Karen. Um, So we stuck with the K theme and named him Kevin. Um, And then uh, we stayed uh, with my mom for a little bit. And she had made um, some bacon for breakfast one morning. And so we were, you know, over at the table eating some breakfast. And we noticed Kev is on the counter. (laughs) (laughs) And so I like ran over there and looked. And sure enough, he was lapping up that bacon grease. Um, (laughs) He loved it. Glad he didn't burn himself. (laughs) I know. Thankfully, it had pulled off a little bit already. Um, but yeah, so after that, we just started calling him Kevin Bacon. So uh, how soon after that he came into your life did you decide, you know what, I think more people need to, you know, see Kevin Bacon the cat and create a, you know, Instagram account for him? <laughs> um, well, Kev has always been super friendly when people come over and, um, you know, he was just kind of loved. And um, whenever the pandemic hit, you know, I was home a lot and spending a lot of time with him. And um, yeah, I decided, I believe it was April, 2020, I decided to make an an account. And um, yeah, people kind of- Became insta-famous instantly. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Well, that's awesome. And how does he feel about having his picture taken? Does he like that? Or I'm assuming he's kind of a ham a little bit. It seems like from his photos, he's pretty keen on having his photo taken. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he um, he definitely has to be in the mood for it, but um, he, does, <laughs> he likes churros, the liquid treats. Um, nice. So he'll pretty much do anything for a churro. Okay, um, so he does tricks for treats. Okay, got it. Exactly. But he <laughs> How knows, does he get so? If he doesn't have it out, he will wait for it before he will look cute. <laughs> Smart cat. <laughs> so he's twenty twenty, and then Dexter twenty twenty two. I'm assuming you said about two years later. How do they get along with one another? Um, So they are super cute together. Um, They're both very similar. They're both gray tabbies and they have a lot of energy. Uh, Dexter is a little more, um, he likes to be held, um, likes to lay on you. Kev does sometimes when he's cold, but he likes to be in charge of the contact. Um, (laughs) Um, But they do, uh, they play a lot together, chase each other around the house. Um, yeah, always playing together. And are they, is Karen still in the picture or is it just Dexteroni and Kevin? Well, uh, Karen passed away from uh, cancer in April. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, and then kind of oddly, uh, I ended up rescuing another kitten um, who looked just like Karen. She's a, a black and brown um, tabby kitten. And so maybe she sent her to you. (laughs) Yes. That's what I was thinking. And so her name is Linda. I like another human name. I like that. (laughs) Keeping it with a tradition. Yeah. So she's about eight months old, I think. And how does she get along with her big brothers? Oh man. Um, So (laughs) you play a little rough with her, which I don't think she likes, but generally she's very playful, but her and Kev are best friends. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's actually really cute because Kev always wanted to be close with Karen, but she was, you know, pretty standoffish. And, and now, you know, they just are attached at the hip basically. That's amazing. Yeah. And does she have a social, is she a a budding starlet on social media as well, or just the two boys? (laughs) Um, So Dexter has his own and um, Linda has been popping up on Kevin's. um, Oh, okay. Demand. So maybe she'll branch out. Start our own 
Maybe. <laughs> nice. Well, let's see. Uh, what else do I got for you? Now, is there, I wonder if there's any way that Kevin Bacon the human, you know, through six degrees of Kevin Bacon could find out about Kevin Bacon the cat. So I, there was actually a cat I wrote about once, uh, Dennis, well, it was a really neat story that Dennis Quaid adopted Dennis Quaid the cat. I don't know if you ever heard about that. That happened during COVID because COVID was rough on a lot of things, but one of the only positives about COVID was so many animals got adopted. It was really great to see all these shelters go empty for the right reasons because people don't want to be lonely. And Dennis Quaid the human found out about Dennis Quaid the cat and literally called up and adopted him. So yeah, but it would just be neat to find, you know, I wish there was some connection we could find Kevin Bacon. <laughs> you know, maybe we get a hold of Kira Sedgwick or something. <laughs> find out. But yeah, so um, I got, I guess there's one last question that I want to start asking people for, you know, if you could ask Kevin Bacon the cat anything and he could answer you, what would you ask him? Maybe ask him how he um, comes up with all of his jokes. So he does <laughs> a joke every Friday. It's called Kev's Funny Friday. I like that. Yeah, people just eat it up and he's very talkative. So a lot of times I'll have him meowing and kind of do the captions for him. Uh, what are some of his best jokes? I'd love to hear. <laughs> um, well, he did one, uh, a Kevin Bacon one, which I thought was appropriate. Of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what would it be called if Kevin Bacon the cat was a male stripper? And, <laughs> The sign outside would say bacon strips. Oh, nice. I like that. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of those funny vet signs you see with vets with the sense of humor that have the funny stuff. I always like those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's he's one for corny jokes. That's for sure. Okay. And then the last thing too, I always like to, in the articles that I write, uh, I always ask people what's something special that you'd like people to know about your cat. So I'd love to hear Anything special you'd love people to know, you know, to get to know the real side of Kevin that they don't see, you know, behind the scenes kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so Kevin and I uh, have a really strong bond. Um, you know, I go through emotional things, you know, over time and he, he always just kind of knows what I need. Um, so if I'm ever, you know, crying or just feeling really sad, he comes over there and sits with me or just kind of pause my leg, you know, trying to get me to pet him. And, um, you know, if I'm laying down, not feeling good, he'll come lay with me. And, um, yeah, he's just always that, that support. Um, and I never have to ask him for what I need. He always just kind of knows. That's really awesome. i cats are so intuitive and to anybody that I ever meet, you know, I'm very defiant about loving cats. And when people say they don't like cats, I'm like, we haven't met the right one yet. <laughs> so there's always exactly. cats have a special sixth sense for really knowing when we need them and knowing it without words and without any kind of anything, you could just be feeling something and they just come and they sit on you. And once there's the cat purring on your lap, it's hard to be in a bad mood. <laughs> so. Exactly. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much. And I really, really appreciate you taking the time. I'd love to see him if he's around. Is he yeah, here? Yeah. <laughs> what are some nicknames you have for Kevin? I'm sure there's got to be a lot. <laughs> um, yes, there are a lot. Um, so I call him Kev, Kevo. Um, some of I like Kevo. Call him <laughs> KB. Nice. Uh, Baconator. Of um, course. Occasionally, <laughs> butt sniffer. Um, <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, he's my, my little man. Well, I really appreciate it. And thank you for taking the time to talk with us. And I can't wait for more people to learn more about Kevin B. Kevin B. Cat, Kevin Bacon, Cat Baconator, Kev <laughs> AB. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. I'm always happy to talk about Kevin. So appreciate you having me on here. Of course. Thank you. 